So ultimately, obviously, all of this tension between the United States and Mexico and between the, the Texans and Mexico is eventually going to result in some problems um, and some, uh, you know, outright violence. In 1832, in a city in Texas called Anahawk, that's how you would say this right here, Anahawk, um, uh, some armed Texans, that's, I guess, a little bit redundant. You would imagine most Texans to be armed today. Just kidding. So armed Texans are going to confront a bunch of Mexican officials about what's been going on and the tensions between the two groups um, as sort of like a protest. So they start protesting uh, the Mexican government in Anahawk. And word spreads um, about this. And pretty, um, you know, not far away from Anahawk is another city called Velasco. And Velasco finds out about what um, is going on in Anahawk, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm really down for this cause. I'm here for this. Um, how can we help? So maybe we can help arm the protesters that are in Anahawk. So um, Velasco uh, has one cannon. They have a cannon. And so they're like, you know who could really use this cannon right now? The people in Anahawk. Let's get them this cannon. So they start rolling this cannon down the road to take it all the way to uh, Anahawk. On their way there, they're stopped by some Mexican soldiers. And the Mexican soldiers are like, hey, I know exactly what you're about to do with that cannon. Don't even think about it. Turn around and get it right back to where it came from. And they're like, nope. And they fire on the Mexican soldiers. They attack them and the soldiers surrender. Um, so pretty quickly, word about what's going on in Anahawk, word about what happens with the people from Velasco. It's spreading all over the place and people are starting to really, really resent the Mexican government and start thinking maybe we should uh, be an independent country from uh, Mexico. So in 1832 and 1833, conventions are held all over Texas to talk about what they want to do. And a lot of um, Texans really support uh, te Texas independence. Um, even um, even Stephen Austin goes and he supports, um, you know, Texas independence. So he ends up going to Mexico City to um, talk to the government of Mexico about, uh, you know, what kind of peaceful solution can we bring to this? He presents his plan and his peace agreement um, for independence for Texas. And because he even mentions Texas independence, they throw him in jail for over a year. And obviously by the time he really, he's released from jail, he is not going to want a peaceful solution. And he's just going to want independence for, Me for Texas at any, by any means necessary. So um, this guy right here is Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. We'll just call him Santa Ana. Santa Ana is the new president of Mexico. And Santa Ana is a really, really harsh, um, intense guy with not a very friendly um, reputation. So uh, Santa Ana really very much believes in a strong central government. So he does not believe that Texas should have all this power. They believe they should, he should be called, they should be controlled very strictly by the Mexican government. He ends up banning all state run militias uh, because he doesn't want, um, you know, Texas or any other community having a way to, um, you know, maybe rise up against the Mexican uh, authority or Mexican government or military. Um, and a lot of Texans and Tejanos are starting to feel like their liberty are being threatened um, like you know they're not being respected and uh, by Santa Ana and his government which is really making them sort of push themselves even further away uh, from Mexico so uh, this leads us to what one of my personal favorite battles in the uh, the war for Texas independence um, which is the Battle of Gonzales so in in uh, Gonzales is a city in October of uh, 1835. Um, Mexico asks for a cannon back from the city of Gonzales. Now, like the city of Alaska, the city of Gonzales has a cannon. Uh, this cannon was given to them by the uh, government of Mexico a uh, very, very long time before this to help protect those people against Native Americans. So, you know, like, here's a cannon to defend yourself. Now, Mexico is like, well, we don't really want all these people to be having cannons because, you know, they might use it against us. So we got to get our cannon back. So Mexico is like, hey, Texas, or hey, Gonzales, let us have this cannon back. And Gonzales is like, no way. We know exactly why you want your cannon. There's no way you're getting it. This belongs to us. Uh, nah. So, um, Mexican forces actually go 
to Gonzales and try to forcibly take it. And uh, the people in Gonzales sort of barricade the cannon inside this building and raise a flag up the top of the building with a picture of the cannon on it. And it says on the flag, come and take it. You see it here. Um, and right here, you see it says, come and take it. They're daring them to come and take this cannon away. And um, the Texans actually even attack the Mexican forces before they can try to come and take it. And the uh, Mexican military is forced to retreat. So um, this battle right here we consider this to be the first battle of the texas revolution so the next month once word is spreading about uh you know all you know what happened in gonzalez what's going on all over texas um they decide to hold something called the consultation and this is in november of 1835 um, at this point there's really no help for a peaceful uh, resolution to the problems that are uh, going on between Texas and Mexico. Um, so uh, the a group of uh, you know leaders in Texas they meet at a place called Washington on the Brazos, and there they essentially found a brand new government and they uh, task this man Sam Houston like Houston Texas. They task this man with raising an army and leading that army against the Mexican military uh, to gain Texas independence. So. In December, uh, the Texans take control of San Antonio, uh, the city, and Santa Ana is furious. Um, so he sends troops in to punish the Texans and end, in his mind, what is a rebellion. So by February um, in 1836, they make it there. 6,000 Mexican soldiers make it uh, to San Antonio. And at San Antonio, they have an old mission. This is the building right here. Um, and this building is called the Alamo. It was an old mission. And all of the people who live in San Antonio hide inside uh, of the Alamo, uh, hide from the Mexican um military here and San, Santa Ana even goes with them um, and Santa Ana and Santa Ana demands their surrender and the current leader of these people in the Alamo in San Antonio his name is William Travis you see him pictured there on the right William Travis um, gets the you know he gets a letter or whatever a message from San Antonio that says to surrender and William Abbott Travis responds by firing a cannon uh, towards the um, Mexican military. So the you can see the Texans really like their cannons. So this is basically just a giant middle finger, a big F U to the um Mexican military and Santa Ana basically saying there's no way we're going to give up come and get us and so for the next 12 days the Mexican military fires on the Alamo um, and on March 6th they make it um, inside so uh, 1800 Mexican soldiers blast inside the Alamo and in about four hours they kill all 200 Texans that are inside every single person that is inside the Alamo um, they kill so uh, after all of this, it is just, you know, while what's going on at the Alamo is happening, um, back at the at Washington on the Brazos, um, 57 Texans and two Tejanos are meeting, and uh, they officially signed the Texas Declaration of Independence on March 2nd of 1863, and they write up a new constitution. Um, so officially now we have the Republic of Texas. Texas is um, one of the only states to ever be its own independent country. That's one of the reasons why we call it the Lone Star State. They've got this one star on their state flag because they were the only part of that country. They were just one country. So uh, we'll see some uh, Mexico puts up obviously a, a heck of a fight here. It's a pretty big military. Um, they uh, win several battles, um, and uh, but like I said, Santa Ana is really like a ruthless, harsh guy, and he doesn't get a very good reputation, not really making uh, the Texans want to um, negotiate or come up with a peace agreement for him at all. And one of those examples is uh, what we call the massacre at Goliad. Um, so all of the uh, Texans who had been captured, all, all the Texans and Tejanos that had been captured at um, other battles that Mexico won, battles like Refugio and Coleto, uh, you don't need to write those down, but battles like that uh, where Mexico had won, they had taken all these prisoners of war. And one day, um, on March 26, Santa Ana um, goes to where all of these um, prisoners are being held at a place called Goliad. There's 340 of them, and he says, line them up and kill them all. And that's what they do. They line up 340 prisoners of war and execute all of them. This is um, a big no-no um, as far as, uh, you know, 
uh, war ethics and things like that go. This is a, a really quite a savage and cruel, harsh thing to do. And so this is just making it um, more and more likely that the Texans are not going to want to negotiate with Santa Ana, but he's trying to be harsh to sort of scare everyone into um, submission. So Sam Houston um, actually begins to retreat to the east, and a lot of people see that happening, and they're like, oh my god, he's fleeing, Sam Houston and his military are leaving, um, and so a lot of people start fleeing to avoid the Mexican army, because they're slowly advancing into Texas, and they're thinking, you know, Sam Houston's leaving, we gotta leave too, and that's called the runaway scrape, that when everyone starts leaving Texas, and what they don't know is that Sam Houston isn't actually le leaving Texas, he's just said setting up a surprise attack on the Mexican uh, military. So um, on April 21st of 1836, Sam Houston leads his forces um, to attack Santa Ana's at San Jacinto, uh, which is where Houston is today. Uh, you know, they name it after him because it's Sam Houston. So um, this is where at that battle, at the Battle of San Jacinto, they are shouting, remember the Alamo, remember Goliad, you know, like remember what they did to our brothers, remember what they did to our family uh, and the savagery that they uh, used when they were handling uh, people that we loved and cared about and this gives everybody the motivation and determination they need to win the battle of san jacinto so uh the texans actually capture santa Ana at the battle of san jacinto and they win the battle and they forced him to sign a treaty the treaty of velasco like the city that um, was first trying to give that cannon to anahawk they signed the treaty of velasco and um they essentially hold a gun to santa Ana's head and force him to sign it and uh, it makes Mexico pull all of their troops out of Texas, and we officially um, have the Republic of Texas.